Goosebumps. The TV show adaptation of R.L. Stein's horror books for kids with the same name. The first episode, The Haunted Mask Part 1, which is arguably the best episode, aired on the 27th of October 1995 on Fox Kids. The final episode, Deep Trouble Part 2, aired on the 16th of November 1998. Since then, it has made its way to several other networks for reruns of the show. Before we get started, I would just like to say that JonTron's video on Goosebumps has inspired me to make this video. I rewatched it for the umpteenth time and decided to watch an episode he covered in the video, My Hairiest Adventure, which is, um... How about some roast beef? I don't want food, I want answers! Larry, don't run! Good. Anyway, I kept scrolling through Netflix for any other cringy episodes and came across this. Get ready for a nostalgic thrill ride because today we're going to be looking at one of the strangest episodes of Goosebumps. One Day at Horrorland. <laughs> The first part to this episode is just your average top of the line Goosebumps episode. Bad acting and writing with a bit of mystery behind the plot. And we assume that the characters will die by the end of it. Much like Captain America and Avengers- I'm sorry, I'm an MCU based channel, I have to include it in every video somehow. Okay, part one starts and the intro rolls and it just- <clears throat> It just gives me the urge to- <laughs> Anyway, we're introduced to the main characters of this story. Generic father, mother, daughter, and son. They're on their way to a theme park called Zoo Gardens, but they can't find a way. They have an argument about how they're lost, then the mother subtly says, Well, your father would have had the car fixed. He might have air conditioning that worked. Hmm, I wonder if that will come up later. The daughter seems like a generic teen, and the son seems like a generic wimpy little brother who thinks zoos are cool. It's probably one of those zoos where all they have is sheep anyway. No, it's not, it sounded cool. Let's find a gas station. A gas station? I don't even see a road. Well, okay, let's see here. Mr. Morris? They really couldn't be bothered to give him a name? Okay, let's just call him George. Alright, listen up, George. You, you don't speak to your wife like that. Seriously, though, what was up with that face he made? It's just so bizarre, I can't even think of a joke for it. The daughter then brings up how they can resolve their divorce. And the boy... Yeah, just all of a sudden, there's fireballs coming their way, and why doesn't the father just reverse and drive off? Instead, they just insist of locking the doors. The door! So this very dangerous scheme just turns out to be the entrance to a different theme park, Horrorland. But you may be asking... What's Horrorland? Well, don't worry, because... Luke has your answer. It's an amusement park, what else? I bet the rides are really scary, let's go, can we? This delivery is just awful. He said this line as if he was a Horrorland enthusiast, but no, just bad direction and acting. Luke then literally changes his mind within seconds. He wants to look at a bunch of stupid sheep. Without much of a fight, they go into Horrorland. And the thought of how much a ticket will cost doesn't even cross their mind. And the parents don't even question how the park were able to pull off such great effects. I mean, they thought they were gonna die. I mean, what if they didn't lock the doors? They, they would have died. They get to the car park of Horrorland and don't notice anything strange. For example, the person clearly hiding behind a tree and the abandoned car. They get out of their car and make their way to the entrance. Unbeknownst to them, someone has planted a bomb under their car. Jesus, how spooky. They go up to the ticket booth and get a crazy scare. <laughs> Welcome to Horrorland! Wow, 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 that was, that was pretty scary. It's uh, totally not predictable. No, please, you're our guest today. Admission is free. Really? Wow, that's, that's great. Enjoy Horrorland! What? These parents are awful, how do they not question that? They just take it as a kind gesture from a guy wearing a scary mask, talking in a creepy voice. Why didn't they turn back immediately? There was only one other car in the car park, like how stupid can they get- Oh, forget it. So the Morris family carry on and immediately get scared. Again. 
but for some reason this guy's mask is just a normal Halloween mask. It's like the makeup department quit halfway through filming so the costume department had to take over. The thing that's disturbing about this is that all of them are scared except for little Luke over here. Like why is he laughing? There's a decapitated girl right in front of him. <laughs> Go ahead kids, have fun. You know those effects are really great. Effects? What? Fun? Why is there laughter? This family is broken. The Morris family tread forward and split up. For some reason, the dad thinks that that's a good idea. You're letting them go off on their own. Of course, you worry too much. Well, maybe this will be okay. It'll be fine. Trust me. Now, your mother and I will meet you right back here in one hour. Okay. I don't know why, but the mum always seems so concerned, and then in the very next shot, she's just like, Bye. So the kids run off and make their way through the park. They hear a spooky noise and then... What? <laughs> Why are they laughing? Why did the boy just look behind that curtain? Is that even them laughing? Are they such bad actors that they had to dub over their awkward, creepy laughter? About nothing. <laughs> the kids then get a spook from another man, but in the good mask. Okay, what is that boy's face? Has he never been scared before? Wow, they really tried to scare you in this place. Yeah. He, he was kidding, wasn't he? Sure hope so. Well, that's what this whole place is about, right? Making you feel scared. Yeah, yeah, for once you're right. Come on, let's go on a ride. Okay. Okay, this dialogue is delivered so poorly that I feel like he genuinely never listened to the director and the crew were just like, eh, screw it. He shows no emotional thought change, it's just always delivered in the same way. It, it's so bad. So the kids make it to the House of Mirrors. They goof around and then there's this really weird sequence where the boy gets lost and the sister just walks around in circles and recites the same sentence. Luke, just stay there, I'm coming. Then this trippy stuff happens, but this time it's a new mask, so I guess the makeup department didn't give up. I don't really understand what's going on here, so yeah. The mother and father are on their way to get a refreshment. On their way, the mother hears a scream, and somehow the dad doesn't hear it. Meanwhile, the walls start closing in on the girl, which I feel like I should say now is called Lizzie. She once again just recites the same sentence. Back to the parents now, and they're just getting their drinks, and it's all fine and dandy until... The monster pisses out of his finger into their drinks. How distasteful. Honey, let's find the kids. I want to get out of here. Yes, Mrs. Morris, who I'm going to call Lauren. That's a good idea. Kids? You got kids? Lauren, George, run. Where are they? Well, they uh, just went off on the rides. Really? Why, why? Is there something wrong? Well, no. It's just that parents don't usually let their kids go running around horribly. Let's go. Thank you, George, for listening to your wife for once. Back to the kids now, and the girl, Lizzie, is literally about to get squashed by two walls. Oh, but how convenient. The floor just collapses beneath her feet, and she falls into a portal to an alternate dim- Oh, no, it's just, a, it's just a slide. Did you enjoy the House of Mirrors? It's one of our most popular rides. It's one of your most popular rides? How? Surely it's under maintenance for most of the time to fix the floor. Also, if she was a tad bit wider, what would have happened? How does it work? How does the machine know when to break the floor? How does it break the floor? You know what? Never mind. The boy comes out way too energetic, to the point where I feel like it's not the same boy. Like, everything about him is different except for visual aspects. Crazy, they tried to crush me. That makes it too scary. <gasps> One more ride. I don't want to. By this point, the episode has done what I like to call a spin -a The two main characters' personalities have been swapped. Seriously though, I don't get why the boy is so hyper and happy. Did he not get crushed by the wall as well? Why is he so sure about everything? The coffin ride sounds cool. I don't know. I'm not ready to get into a coffin. Oh, come on! Maybe it ends with a big drop into a waterfall or something. Let's go! <sighs> Damn, Lizzie just hit him with the size slash roll eye combo. Up next is a punk emo stage. Also, I'd like to add, why does this kid want to get in a coffin and fall off a waterfall? It then immediately cuts to the shot of one of those monster things watching them walk away. It then cuts back to the parents and we hear, Where are they? They should have been here 10 minutes ago. Wait, what? The kids are 10 minutes late? How? The dad said to meet them back here in an hour. You're telling me that for the time it took for them to get to and go through the house of mirrors and then make their way to the coffin cruise took one hour and ten minutes? Not buying it. Hey George, see that family getting forced into that sex dungeon over there? So? 
The husband goes to check it out and hears laughter, so that just cleans up Lauren's thoughts. Definitely can't be a speaker to block out the noise of the vigorous pan. We cut back to the children and hear this. This is really cool. I don't like it. Well, at least one of them's having fun. The kids are getting their coffins and enjoy the cruise. Well, one of them. This is kind of relaxing. It's boring if you ask me. Luke, can you just be grateful for once, please? Oh my god, that's amazing. You can see the kid catch the lid and accept defeat when it drops on him. It's bloody brilliant. So Lizzie starts to experience her claustrophobia kicking in, and what does Luke do? <laughs> Laugh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this kid is a psycho. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> this kid is enjoying this way too much. For all he knows, he could be heading towards his death, and he's just giggling away. So the kids make it back to where they began. Somehow, I have no idea how they were able to do a 360 loop. After being phenomenally spooked, they decide to head back to their parents. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that laugh for? So the kids make their way back to the parents. Somehow, I have no idea how Lizzie was able to find their way back. This is literally just a forest with poorly constructed footpaths. How do you know that this is the way? So the kids reunite with the parents and make their plans to exit the park. Because... There's something not quite right about this place. What do you mean? They somehow find their way back to the entrance, but the doors are closed and there are spikes on it, so they're pretty much screwed. <laughs> do any good go find the manager come on you ask me there's a lawsuit here the thought of filing a lawsuit has only now popped into your head what makes you think that this place has a manager and what makes you think he'll be a normal civilized guy and most of all what is this writing hold on you haven't been on all the rides? Well, damn me if that's true. What were we thinking, trying to leave? Oh man, so we continue? I gotta wait another week. Oh, oh wait, oh, okay. As I said earlier, part one was bad, but it made sense. It was a scary and mysterious storyline. But then we get to part two and it's just like Spongebob sponge out of water all over again. Well the first film was good and the second just looks like the writers were high off LSD for most of it. Anyway, part two starts right where we left off, with the Morris family in a bit of a pickle. Now you take off that stupid mask and talk to me man to man. Not a mask. So an epic chase scene occurs and for some reason the dad tells the rest of the family to go into the sex dungeon the mother found earlier. They go inside the door and the dad asks who's there even though he can't hear anything. What? 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 What is this? What the hell is this? Okay, this is where it begins to get weird. I'll just let it unravel for you. The Morris is! <laughs> What is this? <laughs> Isn't she terrific? <laughs> what do we want from you? We want to say thank you. Okay, okay, wait. One, what is that laugh? <laughs> Two, why don't the parents stop this strange monster thing from touching their children? Just a minute. What do you mean, thank you? We want to thank you for being our guest today on... <laughs> The Monster Channel's favorite television program. Uh, excuse me, what? Monsters have cable television? Here are some clips of the Morris family staying calm. Let's watch them in super slow mo. Wait a minute, these shots look familiar. Oh yeah, it's because they're literally the same shots from earlier that we saw from the point of view of a camera that doesn't exist within the TV show. What was the point of showing off all those CCTV cameras then? As they clearly didn't film anything. We have another show coming up, a game show, and you're gonna be the contestants. We just wanna go home. Yeah. You can't go home. What do you mean we can't go home? You can't go home, because if you do, you will get that new car. What new car? Who said anything about a new car? Okay, first of all, let the man speak, Laura. It's the first time anyone has ever spoken about a new car. Why are you confused? Oh, what kind of a car is it? A brand new sports utility vehicle. Dad, 
Shh. Well, we all sure could have loads of fun with a brand new sports utility vehicle. Oh boy, would we? I personally would love a sports utility vehicle. Honestly, it sounds like they had a brand deal with a car company, and then at the last minute they dropped out, so they just had to keep saying, new sports utility vehicle. Carrying on, the Morris family are shown their way around the set. They stop at the makeup department to do makeup, I guess. Oh hey, oh. could you stop caressing your children? Oh my heavens! Oh! Oh, my stars! Oh, my word! Well, there's not much I can do with them, is there? Hmm? Uh. Oh, well, they call me the miracle worker. <laughs> all right, come along, sit down, sit, 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 sit. Don't lollygag now, we haven't got all day. <laughs> right, there we are. Okay, that, that was amazing. Who the hell uses the term lollygag? Also, I love how the Morris family have no further questions after finding out that monsters not only exist, but have cable television. They just kind of accept everything from now on, especially the dad. Lastly, you may not have seen it, but that blue guy with the headset deserves an Oscar. He's the only convincing monster, and I think that's because he's the most human. He gets annoyed when the makeup monster won't shut up, and so he just pleases him so he'll stop talking. You're not gonna hurt us, are you? <sighs> Darling, we're monsters, but we're not monsters. Yeah, goddammit, Mom, how, how dare you judge him, don't you know? If a species has cable television, then they're defined as civilized. Ugh. Oh. Okay, why are they in a makeup studio? Makeup isn't even being applied. Oh yeah, because it's a funny joke. Now I get it. It's, it's played for a cheap laugh. Wicked. Man, wait till everyone hears about this at home, Chad. A little bit dinner right, Tommy. <laughs> I hope it has air conditioning. Oh gosh, they said it was sporty. I am so nervous. <laughs> okay, Mum and Dad. Maybe you're getting a little bit too hyped about the possibility of your sports utility vehicle having air conditioning. It's the Monster Channel's favourite game. How many shows are there on the Monster Channel? Because if this is their favourite, then that implies that there are other game shows, as well as other TV shows in general. Does that mean that there are Horrorlands all over the rest of the world shooting different TV shows for Monster Channel? Does this studio have a competitor? Okay, some weird stuff happens and it turns out that in the game show it's the Morrises against the Morrises. I would like to point out that that is a very flawed system, as there is no way that they can- If it's the Morrises versus the Morrises, how can we lose? Beat me to it. Mom, how, how can we lose, dear? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Let's meet today's humans! Carl Morris, his lovely wife Peggy- So they do have names? Carl and Peggy? Cool. I- I- I don't- I don't really care though. Wait, how do the monsters know their names? Okay, so from this point onwards, it really is like watching a game show. There's an overdramatic host and an overexcited guest. It's boring, but strange. Anyway, they end up getting their prize money up to $1,400, but they end up done goofing and failing to get that sports utility vehicle. Anyone care to take a guess and solve the puzzle to win that fabulous sport utility vehicle? We'll take a pee. No. Oh, no I'm leaving you, George. No. Now, this following part confuses me because a sponsored advert starts playing. There are so many things wrong with this advert that I'm just gonna let it play. 50 monster love hits. Just call 1 700 monster. Welcome Jesus back, Christ, I went too far. Why do they have that bloody macro shot of his face after the commercial break? Like, what the hell? a sense of humor. It's only worms after all. Remember, the car. Okay, okay, calm down, Dad. Mm. I think I can solve this puzzle, Wretch. Mm. The Morris family is lunch. Dun, dun, dun. Wait a minute, isn't the correct grammar the Morris family are lunch? Anyway, they got it right and the episode ends with their roll credit. Seriously though, they are way too happy about it, until Lizzie makes a striking discovery. Wait a minute, what, what do you mean by lunch? The Morris family will find out exactly what we mean when we return to Raw Deal right after this. Whoa, how dramatic. Welcome back. And now, we'll find out if the Morris family are ready to Cut the deck for a chance to win that brand new, fully loaded, sport utility vehicle of their dream. Wait, what? I thought they just won the sports utility vehicle. Ready? Yes, but, but what did you mean about lunch? <laughs> That's why we call it a puzzle. 
No, 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 that's a reasonable question, not a puzzle. Hey, monster kids, now you can have hours of fun with your very own human figures. Scare them, smash them, eat them. Human action figures. <laughs> Grandma sold separately. Okay, what the hell, you're charging extra for Grandma? This advert is more peculiar than the other, as it shows the sinister side of the monsters. Also, who makes and distributes the toys? Carrying on, they win the sports utility vehicle and George fulfills his sexual fantasies with a monster. Well, not quite yet. Oh my god! Anyway, the family come to an ultimatum and have to decide which door they want to go through. One has a big animal that will kill them and one has the sports utility vehicle, which I just guess the monsters can buy and set up the insurance for. Surprise, surprise, they picked the wrong door. What a shocker. I'm scared. It's getting ready to pounce. Hey! Ah! Ah! Oh, quick! Through here! Hurry! In fine, quick! This way! Oh, hurry! Oh, I like him. He's a good monster. He's just trying to help the Morris family. Oh, god damn it! Turns out that the only reason he helped the Morris family is because he believes that he should have been the host of Raw Deal. But because he's not the producer's brother-in-law, he didn't get it. After Black, yes, that monster's name was Black, died, the Morrises continue on with their escape triggering these first-person POV shots, which are clearly not where they actually are. I don't know why, but this scene disturbs me. I don't know if it's the editing or the sound. It's just, ugh. So they come across a fence and realize that beyond it is their car. Luke does something helpful for once and holds open a big hole in the fence which any of them would fit through anyway. Good job buddy. However this turned out to be a massive failure because the monsters caught up with them and easily knocked the fence down. <laughs> oh, no! oh, no! <laughs> Holy crap did you see that? George just turned into an action movie star. That roll over the bonnet was badass. <laughs> I feel like that wasn't in the script and the director didn't tell him to do that. He just randomly on set decided to show off his sick moves. So they get the car started, but not without a struggle. Okay, Jesus, George, no need to be a psycho about it. So they drive off. And remember that bomb placed on their car from earlier? It turns out that it's a remote control device, which makes the dad start clowning around. I am not clowning around! So you're telling me that the device was placed there just in case that big animal didn't eat them and they weren't caught on the way out? Also, to their knowledge, there was no hole in the fence. So why would they put it there unless this happens every time? So it turns out that the TV show host is controlling the car and he makes him drive off a cliff. No, what he actually does is torture the family and scare them to death. Then the episode ends on a cliffhanger. Now that's what I call a cliffhanger! Beat me to it again. The last sequence of the episode shows a married couple watching the show. Somehow they have a live broadcast of them on a cliff even though there's clearly no cameras around. Also, I'm gonna assume that these monsters are either on a different planet or the curtains are drawn because they invaded a home, killed everyone in it, and now they live in it. So, that was different. That most probably means that it was poorly structured, poorly written, and poorly put together. But I'll find out in the editing process of this video. The moral of that story was, don't get lost or you'll be tossed off a cliff. I'm sorry, I'll leave.